Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Cast. This is Jamie, and I'm so grateful that you're joining today, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube. Today, I have a very special guest who is going to share a lot of helpful information on diet, fitness, and just living our best life. And I just want to welcome Amanda Knightberg, registered dietitian. Amanda, thank you so much for being on the Savvy Cast. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Huge fan of you and what you do. Well, I know that a lot of my friends and family follow you. So if just at the outset, let me go ahead and I'm going to link to all of the ways to get in touch with Amanda. But many, many people follow her Instagram and it's at Amanda Knightbert RD and you spell Knightbert N-I-G-H-T-B-E-R-T. No T, N-I-G-H-B-E-R-T. So Nybert, it's like the, the night no, without the okay. T. I, <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, thank you for that correction. So we'll have it correct in the show notes. So Amanda, before we start, I always ask, what would you have as your last meal? What would your last meal look like? Oh my gosh, I would have kettle corn and oh. graters, raspberry chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, that sounds really <laughs> good. Oh my goodness. Okay. You would go all out. Coming from a dietitian, I, they are my absolute two favorite foods. That's so funny. Okay. I do have to ask you the graters. Have you had Jenny's? You know, I have had Jenny's, but it was it's it wasn't very memorable. I I don't remember it. I had it in Charleston yeah. once, but I think it's very similar. You know, Graders is like full cream. It's yeah. like you know, old school ice cream. It's just so good. Yeah. Well, let before we start, I just want everyone to know sort of how we connected. My husband recently had you as a featured guest at his Silicon Y'all. And Such an honor. He said you blew it out of the park. I had. <laughs> Leave before I didn't get to hear your talk. You have done a TED talk. You're very well known in the industry. Can you just give everyone a picture of what you do and what you help others achieve? Well, I'm actually a registered dietitian and, and I worked in a clinical setting in a hospital for over 20 years. And about five years ago, I kind of stepped out into this online space to work with clients virtually. And it was really out of what I would see in the hospital setting is that pe people were coming to me trying to be healthy, trying to eat well, trying to lose weight, you know, doing what their doctor asked them to do, eat less, exercise more, you know, listening to kind of like mainstream media and trying to implement those, you know, kind of upper level nutritional strategies or, you know, trendy things. And we're just struggling. And, you know, what I have found is that we have overcomplicated nutrition. And that's what I love about, you know, what you show on, on your page is that we just need to simplify nutrition. And that's what I try to do. Simplify nutrition for weight loss. You know, I try to teach people that all foods fit. It's all about creating balance between, you know, the foods that are going to elevate your health and help you reach your goals. Those are the things we want to do 80% of the time. And then the foods that make us happy and, and allow us to celebrate and live our life, we want to do, you know, 20% of the time. So ultimately helping, especially women, just break the all or nothing mindset. I call it the diet roller coaster, you mm -hmm. know, where you're either on a diet or you're off a diet and recognizing that. It is really about consistent lifestyle changes that you do over time that create the healthy issue. So I take it that you are not a fan of any diet. There's, no, It's just healthy choices and a consistent pattern of eating whole healthy foods in the right proportions. Yeah, exactly. I mean, diet is a relative term. You know, diet is what we eat, but a diet mm -hmm. can also be something we follow. So you know, again, I think that anytime you participate in a program that is overly restrictive, whether it asks you to omit a whole food group or it asks you to essentially starve yourself or, you know, under eat, it's not something sustainable and it's not something that you'll be able to do in the long run. And I always say, whatever you do to lose the weight, you have to do to keep it off. So when we implement really unsustainable, radical weight loss approaches, they're generally short lived. And that's really what I'm trying to help women kind of break that cycle. That's the all or nothing cycle where you, you know, you go all in for 30, 60 days, you lose a bunch of weight, 
And then you think you're going to go back to your old life when in reality, you're just kind of on that diet roller coaster. So learning to break that cycle is um, really powerful. Well, Amanda, and I love your Instagram. It is absolutely fabulous because I think you are the perfect mix of exercise that it looks fun and easy. You don't have to have a gym membership. I mean, I went and bought the block to do the, yeah, um, the yoga oh block. my goodness. Yes. That and your recipes, they're easy. There's nothing you have to order. There's no special supplement. It's just doable and it's real. It's real life. So first of all, you have your Instagram page where you just give away so much, but your website, there are many, many ways to connect with the knowledge that you share. And you can also have personal one-on-one and training and you have a lean program, just sort of give us an overview of all that is offered by Amanda Nybert RD. Yeah. You know, again, I mean, I think for the past maybe 10, 15 years, we've kind of gotten really wrapped up in this whole like clean eating, organic, you know, everything has to be perfect. And it was like the invention of recipes with like 20 ingredients. And I'm like, I don't have time Mm-hmm. to to whip up a, a recipe with 20 ingredients. Right. And I think it, it, what it's created is a lot of people feel guilty about quick and easy food. You know, mm-hmm. when in reality, we probably lived on, you know, hamburger helper when we were growing yeah. up, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we had our hamburger helper with a side of uh, steamed broccoli and by golly, that's a balanced meal when it comes mm-hmm. down to it. So what I try to portray on my social media and, and my YouTube and channels and all that is really just, again, how simple eating healthy can be. Um, and some days it is from scratch and some days it's a frozen meal, you know, and, and it's really about creating that balance. You know, probably the biggest complaint that I get from people that come to work with me is, I mean, I'm busy. I'm so busy. I've got three kids. I work full time. So, and, you know, and I always reply back to them. So am I. So, so is everybody else, you know, everybody else is busy in some way, you know, it Mm -hmm. will vary. And what I try to teach them is that, you know, this is really about taking your current life and making small tweaks so that you can be healthy, you can feel your best. And for some people that may mean, you know, frozen meals and bag salads and, you Mm -hmm. know, eating on the go with small tweaks here and there. And for others that may be, you know, cleaning up their ingredients, you know, making recipes with 20 ingredients. Um, So it's really about kind of meeting people where they are. You know, I think that's important. I also am really passionate about teaching people that all foods fit. Okay. If you're a dietitian on social media and you're posting about Chick-fil-A and you're posting about bag salads and frozen meals, girl, go read the comments. I mean, I get attacked left and right. You know, how, how could you as a dietitian recommend Chick-fil-A and how could you as a dietitian recommend that frozen meal? It's so high in sodium. And again, what these people don't realize is that, you know, I've had the experience to work with thousands of clients over the past, I mean, thousands and thousands over the last 25, almost 30 years. And what I've come to realize is that, again, everybody's at a different place in their life, you know, especially right now, financially. You know, yeah. food has never cost more than it has than, yeah. than right now. So me showing someone a, a $4.50 healthy frozen meal mm-hmm. gives them an, an entry, you know, it, it allows them to say, okay, I can afford that. You know, I can't afford mm-hmm. to buy grass fed meat and I can't afford to, afford to buy organic vegetables, but I can afford this high protein 450 lunch, mm-hmm. you know, so so again, I, I can take it, I take it with a grain of salt, you know, because I, I know that my content is helpful to every person out there, but it is always very interesting to see how many food police are out there. Well, you know, that's what I love about you. And I think that's why you have such a huge following. You just recently, I mean, everything you do is so doable in real life, but you recently took a trip, was it Arizona? Yeah. And you, you documented everything that you ate. That was so helpful, Amanda. It was so helpful. And it wasn't like deprivation. You are the queen of how to moderate and enjoy everything. Do you not feel like the majority of people based on, I mean, you've worked with so many, will not write it out if it's so, I mean, who's going to never go to Chick-fil-A? Not me. 
not me. <laughs> I mean, so learn how to occasionally do it and do it the right way. So would you explain to everyone, you're a dietitian, explain how that differs from maybe some of the people who are giving advice, but may not be a registered dietitian. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I take much pride in my um, college degree. You know, it took me four years of of, um, education on top of a clinical rotation, on top of taking a, you know, medical board exam. You know, there's a lot um, that goes involved to being a registered dietitian. It's not a two hour course online. Mm -hmm. which is what potentially a nutritionist could have, or, Mm -hmm. you know, anyone can get sort of like any type of nutrition degree. And and I think that there's a lot of value in working with a registered dietitian. I think my clinical experience, you know, my um, experience with working with people with diabetes and hypertension and kidney, you know, renal problems and Hashimoto's and thyroids, you know, I have that kind of medical background that a lot of, again, just general nutritionists do not have. Also, in terms of, I feel like I'm very equipped to help people figure out what they need. You know, Mm -hmm. again, it's not a one size fits all. You know, I think a lot of times people will be like, okay, well, here's my program, do this, you know, it fits Mm -hmm. for everybody. And in reality, everybody's different, you know? And so you have to be able to look at the client and say, well, in your situation, I think you need to focus on this and this, and we need to focus less on this and this. And I think that, you know, that type of background and um, knowledge is key. In addition, in order for me to maintain my license, I have to do over 75 hours of a continuing education, you know, per over, year? not per year, I think oh, it's for every, years. yes, every three to five years. And again, so I'm constantly learning, you know, I always called myself the renegade dietitian in the hospital. Um, because I feel like I'm a little bit ahead of my my time in my practice, you know, while all the other dietitians were, you know, um, carrying around spray butter and fat free ranch, you know, I was telling people you got to eat real butter and you got to eat eggs yeah. and, and regular ranch, you know, so um, I, I'm really passionate about continuing to educate myself. You know, I'm, I'm never going to uh, stand my ground to something that I feel like I've learned new. You know, Mm -hmm. so over the past five years, if you follow me, you've probably seen a couple of shifts that I made in my philosophy. And and, and as I learn more, I want to bring that to you guys um, to implement in your own life. Well, I know probably when you were in school, you probably learned the food pyramid like a lot of us did. And I think that that's probably one of the things you've you've seen other options as many of us have. And I know one thing you talk a a lot about, and it's really helped me try to incorporate protein. You said protein is so important. Can you explain why? Because I still have friends and people that I know who they will just knickknack during the day on carbs, but they'll say calories in, calories out. What do you say to that? You know, that's a great question. And and yes, you know, metabolism is about calories in versus calories out, but the makeup of your calories matters more. Okay. Like, especially when you're thinking about weight loss, if you eat 5,000 calories of proteins and fats, you'll probably lose weight. But if you eat 5,000 calories of carbohydrates and sugars, you'll probably gain weight. You know, so that whole notion of like calories in versus calories out, it's just too simplified. You have to kind of break it down with regards to those macronutrients. There are three main macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And here's the problem. All right. In the 80s and 90s, we were uber focused on fat. Mm -hmm. You know, every I grew up in the snack well age, the hungry calorie pack. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's not butter spray. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was basically from my recollection, it was like as long as it's fat free, you're good. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, and we would over consume fat free products, which actually manufacturers took the fat out. And what did they add? carbs and sugars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So fast forward to today, and now we're uber focused on carbohydrates and sugars. And rightfully so, the average American eats 400 to 500 carbs a day, which is problematic. But to think that you have to live on a low carb diet, you know, 30, 40, 50 grams of carbs or less for the rest of your life is just ludicrous, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now we're uber focused on carbohydrates and, you know, we're eating all the fat, but really the macronutrient that we've missed out on the most 
is protein. And protein is the most important macronutrient for weight loss. We do not have adequate stores of protein in our body. And I think that the reason why protein is such a polarizing topic is because there is so much misinformation out there or mm -hmm. conflicting information, you know, animals good for you, animals bad for you, vegans good for you, vegans bad for you, high protein's bad for you, high protein's good for you. And so I think in the long run, people are just like, I don't know what to believe, so I'm just gonna eat a little protein. Well, let me tell you, it is what is holding you back because there are basically two pathways in the body. You can either burn fat or you can find protein, but you cannot do both. So when you do not consume enough protein in your diet throughout the day, the, the fat burning pathway is shut down in order for your body to go find the protein it needs. So one of the easiest ways to really rev up your metabolism, improve muscle growth, increase weight loss is to optimize your protein. And I think a lot of times when I talk about protein, people think that I'm talking about a high protein diet and I'm not, I don't advocate high protein eating. I'm actually advocating a protein adequate diet. And that's the problem is, is that, you know, when you see a research study that says high protein diets are bad for you. Well, what does that mean? What's high protein? Mm -hmm. Is 100 grams of protein high protein? Mm -hmm. Is 300 grams of protein high protein? You know, so again, people are missing the nitty gritty of like what these terms are. Um, so, and, and the last thing I want to add, you know, and again, check out all my content and I can help you determine your protein needs because it should be your number one priority, especially when it comes to health, wellness, and weight loss. And is um, it the same for women? Do you think it's as high a priority for both sexes or women? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the easiest way to determine your optimal protein range is your protein needs are 50 to 75% of your body weight. Okay. That's yeah. your optimal range. 50 is the absolute bare minimum okay. and optimal is up to 75%. So if you weigh 200 pounds, your protein range optimal is hundred to 150 grams. And a lot of people are like, whoa, that's high protein. No, it's not. That's adequate to optimal levels. You know, high protein for someone who's 200 grams would be maybe like 220, 250 grams. So again, it's all relative. But I think an important, another important thing to note is that as we age, our protein needs increase. And uh, people don't talk about that at all. And that has to do with the fact that our body's ability to utilize and optimize protein is less. So for example, when you're 20 years old, if you eat 20 grams of protein, your body utilizes 20 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. It optimizes 20 grams of protein. But when you're 50 years old and you eat 20 grams of protein, your body may only utilize 15 grams of protein, but your protein needs are still the same. But in order to get your minimum number, you actually have to be eating more because you don't optimize or you don't absorb, you don't utilize as much as you actually take in. Um, and that's a real big missing link. I mean, women's metabolisms reduce with age more so because of sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass, than hormone imbalance. And there are two things that impact sarcopenia. Number one, inadequate protein intake. Number two, strength training. You know, not doing all the cardio, but not incorporating the, the weights and the strength training, the body weight exercises. Okay, so as we age, and especially women, sarcopenia, which is losing muscle mass, is that correct? Okay, sarcopenia is going to lead to um, loss of muscle tone, and it will add, it'll cause weight gain if we're not getting adequate protein. Yeah, because it reduces your metabolism. Okay, so could you feasibly stop that metabolism slowdown as you age? Because that's what we all dread as we near Absolutely. menopause. So you're saying we can slow that down or halt it by increasing our protein and adding strength training? Two ways, yes. Now, and I'm not saying increasing protein. I'm saying getting adequate protein. Okay. So making okay. sure that you're getting between 50 to 75% of your weight. And again, I would say if you are older, you should be aiming for 75% of On the your weight. On the high side. 50 okay. is not going to be enough. Absolutely. We can improve our metabolism. We can, you know, reduce that kind of aging weight gain by doing those two things, you know, increasing muscle mass through strength training and optimizing, again, muscle mass through optimal protein intake. Okay. So at least consume half our body weight in protein, strength train. How often do we strength train and 
how many days a week and can it just be going to our local gym, following people on as long pushing and pulling weight is does that count as strength? Okay. Absolutely. And for some people, body weight is strength training, you know, simply mm-hmm. squatting your body mm-hmm. weight. I mean, if you're a beginner, that's where you start. Now, obviously, as you do more body weight squats, mm-hmm. you should eventually start adding, you know, more weights to it. But I'm of the mindset, you know, one strength workout a week is better than none. Two is better than one. Three is better than two. You know, so something, you know, I think sometimes we get overwhelmed by trying to do it all. And I think most women just need to start. So, you know, and, and I think women are cardio warriors. We love to walk and run and spin and you know, we love to see our Apple watch, tell us how many calories we burned mm-hmm. and strength training doesn't give us those same kind of like feedback. So we feel like it's not as effective, but it's absolutely your missing link. So really for me in my lean program, which stands for living energized and nourished, the things we focus on the most, again, when we talk about simplifying nutrition is number one, protein optimization. Like, let's not worry about all the other macros. If you optimize your protein and stay within, you know, an adequate caloric deficit, which for most women will be like 16, 18, 2000 calories, you're going to see great results. We don't have to worry about carbs and fats, which goes totally against everything that we've been thinking about for the past four decades. Because first it was all about fats. Now it was all about carbs. So, you know, in lean, we really focus on protein optimization and staying in a caloric deficit. And it just simplifies things. You know, and caloric just, deficit, how when on the lean program, which I, I really want to take because I think it's just for overall health. I don't think you have to necessarily need to correct. lose or just to learn all the ways of optimizing your body and your diet. Absolutely. How does that look for someone? Caloric deprivation. Does that look different for everyone based oh, on absolutely. your body weight? Yeah. Okay. So we use a, you know, we actually calculate that for you in the lean program and it, your caloric deficit will vary from person to person. It's based okay. on your age, your height, your weight, your gender, okay. your current weight, your goal weight, your activity level, you mm-hmm. know? So like my caloric deficit is usually somewhere between 16 to 1800, whereas my maintenance is about 2200. You know, you're, you may be more petite than me. So your caloric deficit may be lower. Someone who's 5'9", you know, their floor deficit is going to be, you know, 2,000, 2,200. So it's very individualized, you know, based on a lot of different factors. But caloric deficit does not mean you're going to be hungry. No, no. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, again, it's very rare that I put someone below 1,400 calories. I think Mm -hmm. really 1,400 is kind of like the lowest now. If you're five foot tall, I mean, I always say you don't have a weight problem. You have a height problem, (laughs) you know, then yeah, you do, you know, your metabolic rate is going to be much slower, but I think that there's an epidemic of women chronically under eating. And to me, anything under 1200 calories, 1300 calories is under eating. And the challenge with that is, is that most likely if you have your calories set at 1200, your protein goal is too low. It's not even half your body weight. So mm-hmm. you, you're mm-hmm. already defeating, you know, you're already doing harm by not getting adequate protein because your calories are so low. So yes, that's going to kind of vary from person to person, you know, based on a lot of different metrics. Okay. What do you think about intermittent fasting? You know, I love fasting. I think that, you know, like any type of nutritional strategy, people have taken it too far. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm of the mindset of, of a 12 to 16 hour fast mm-hmm. is the sweet spot. Yeah. Anything beyond 16 hours, I think, sets you up for some hormonal issues, mm-hmm. you know, some some metabolic imbalances. Ultimately, again, you cannot optimize your protein in six hours. You know, mm-hmm. you need at least eight to 10 hours to, to optimize your protein. So, um, so I think that intermittent fasting can be really powerful. I just see it done incorrectly a lot. You know, people are like, oh, well, if 16 hours is good. I'm going to fast for, you know, 18 every day or 20 every day. And I think that in the long run, that does harm. I'm I'm not against extended fasting, you know, once a week, once a month, Mm -hmm. you know, 24 hours plus. I think that there's a ton of benefit in that, specifically autophagy. Um, But um, again, it's just it's just a a, another thing in your tool belt. It's not an end all. You know, Mm -hmm. if you if you fast and you don't kind of 
you know, bring in your diet and make healthy choices, you're probably not going to see great results. But Mm -hmm. like everything I teach, I try to show people there's a range, you know, you can fast Mm -hmm. anywhere from between 12 to 16 hours is a good. I think everyone from your one year old to your 110 year old should be fasting for at least 12 hours. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I've started doing that. And I will minimum 12 and I try to go 14. I do so well on that. And and I've tried yes. to talk to Zane about it. And I don't know that he, so you do believe at least a 12 hour. Everybody. Fast. Yeah. Because our body. I mean, what, what are you eating at 10 o'clock at night? A bowl of ice cream. I mean, so most of the time, the things that we're eating late at night, they're not, they're not carrots, you know, they're not apples. Yes. They're, they're poor food choices, you know? Yeah. Um, and I do think it, absolutely the body needs to be a digestive rest for at least 12 hours every day. Okay. That's, that's good to know. Cause I've, I've been doing that and I felt like I was doing right. Okay. Give us a glimpse into the lean program. How often do you have it? How long does it last? And what would, what would that look like? What could someone expect? So, um, I offer a session of lean every two weeks, you know, so it's easy to kind of jump in. It's a seven week program. It's all run through my free private app. So no social media, no, you know, anything else needed. I'm going to teach you a ton. Okay. So I provide all the education. The support comes from myself and and a member of my team. Um, And I think what sets Lean apart from every other program out there is the amount of accountability and support you get. You know, we are interacting and supporting you on a daily basis. The program is a come and go as you, as you feel for, you know, as you, as your time allows, you know, you don't have to be there at any certain time, but every day we want you checking in. We want you, um, you know, taking in the education. We want you posting in the group, giving us feedback on how you're feeling, how you're progressing, what questions you have. And then we answer those to kind of keep you on track. And I really think that that's where people find success is, you know, that, that constant support and accountability. So you know, I mean, we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend. So I spent last night talking about, you know, to all my clients, like, what are we doing? You know, how are we going to make this weekend successful? Here are my tips, you know, what are we going to do if we fall off track? You know, reach out, let us know, let us help Mm -hmm. you get back on track. And it's really that community support that allows people to be successful um, in the long run. So yeah, check it out. Check out my website. I'll have all the information. And then if someone wants the one-on-one, they can have personal coaching with you as well. Yeah, we do offer one-on-one coaching and and, uh, lots of services. Lots of Um, different ways. Mm -hmm. Well, just give us just give us a success story that, that would inspire everyone that maybe just thinks, oh, I can't do it. I've tried this. I've tried that. What's an inspirational story that, that you've encountered with your, you know, one of your clients? The nice thing about lean is that it, it's really for anyone. I, you know, I have a lot of people that reach out to me and say, Amanda, I have 60, 70, 80 pounds to lose. Is this program for me? And I'm like, yes. You know, I have multiple clients that have lost over a hundred pounds and kept it off for the last three years. And then I have people that reach out to me and say, Amanda, I eat clean. I eat organic. I run every day. You know, I feel like I'm doing all the right things, but I'm just not making progress. And this program is for them as well, you know, in Mm -hmm. terms of um, understanding that healthy food adds up. And -hmm. if your macros are out of balance, then it doesn't matter how clean your food is. You're not going to see weight loss. So I have hundreds of success stories and you can find them on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, not on my Instagram, on my website, I have a testimony Mm -hmm. page. Um, So I think when we talk about success stories, I think probably the the most common feedback I get is, um, Amanda, I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. I understand the why. You know, a lot of times, a lot of programs, a lot of diets just say, do this. Okay, mm-hmm. because I said so. Mm-hmm. And and we're gonna give you guidelines and, and we're gonna tell you to, you know, do this, but we're gonna show you the why behind it. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of times when you understand the why, then it all makes it like when you understand how alcohol impacts your progress, then it causes you to second guess drinking four or five days a week, you know. Mm-hmm. But if someone just says don't drink, then yeah. it's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna drink, but I don't really understand why. Right. So I think the education piece is, is really valuable. And then in addition to the daily support and accountability, which is what people need, you know. And do you find that people um, after they've taken one, they might take another and then maybe circle back just based on how much support you might need at a season of your life? Yeah. So most people will complete the seven week program and then I have a monthly membership. 
um, that they can oh. roll into for, mm -hmm. you know, a, a low cost. And the monthly membership is run just like Lean, same daily support and accountability. But the nice thing about the monthly membership is because Lean is a foundational program. We're going to focus on building your foundation mm -hmm. because without a solid foundation, you can't do all these upper level nutritional strategies. And then in the monthly membership, we build on that. So one month we talked about women's hormones. One month we talk about sleep. One month we talk about reverse dieting, maintenance and plateaus. One month we talk about emotional eating. So it's just kind of like continuing to make you the most educated you can in order to optimize your health. Well, I am going to sign up because I get so much off of your Instagram and your website is wonderful, but I'm going to do the lane because I just, I love what you do and, and you're just so knowledgeable and you're so fun. And I just will link to everything that you have to offer in the show notes and Amanda, is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off just to anyone who might, might just need to take that leap? You know, I, I have a, I have three sayings and I'll, I'll leave you with these. Number one, perfection leads to failure, but consistency mm -hmm. leads to results. So anything that you're doing in order to elevate your health, don't focus on being perfect, focus on being consistent. Number two, I mentioned it earlier, whatever you do to optimize your health and lose weight, you better be prepared to do it forever. So stop mm -hmm. looking for quick fixes. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to, whatever you're doing has to feel sustainable because it's hard to lose weight, but it's hard to maintain as well. And you have to put in the work there as well. So um, those are kind of like my, my two takeaways. Progress, not perfection is kind of the mm -hmm. last one, you know, yeah. giving yourself self grace and recognizing that every day is not going to be perfect, but every day is a good day to reset and restart. Well, Amanda, you're wonderful. Thank you. This has been very valuable and I encourage everyone go to your site, check out the Instagram and Amanda, I just so appreciate it. You're, you're fabulous. Oh, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much. And all, I feel like all your recipes fit the lean protocol. So I'm getting I better. I, I have watched and listened. And then between you and several others, I've learned how to try to cook lots of protein and fewer ingredients and few veggies. So I've learned a lot and I'm trying to apply it. So I love That's it. wonderful. But the holidays, you know, we, we do step out just a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about, it's all about those, you know, uh, family traditions, those mm -hmm. meals, you know, those recipes that we grew up on. And, and that's, that's what it's all about is finding that balance. That's right. Well, Amanda, thank you so much. And you're welcome anytime to come back and share with us. Oh, thank you. Okay. Take care. Mm -hmm.